All right, guys, before we get started today, a big thank you to our partner, Microsoft Surface, celebrating 10 years of partnership with the NFL. As the official laptop, tablet, and sideline technology provider for the LA Chargers, Microsoft Surface provides players and coaches with the tools to succeed, both on and off the field every day. Learn more about Surface at surface.com. And welcome in to a week two edition of the final drive. Chargers lose an arrowhead to the Kansas City Chiefs 27-24. We're taping this early Friday morning, fresh off a flight from KC to LA. Here with Haley Elwood, as always. And Haley, there's a lot of different directions yeah. that we could start with this one. Let me just get your overall reactions. We can go from there. Um... Yeah, fresh off the flight. I mean, we are what five hours ish removed from touching. Yeah. Shout down out to producer, it. our producer Brian, who is grinding, grinding <laughs> on the back end. Um, it was one of those games that you felt going into it because of the type of matchup, because of who was playing, because of when it was announced, because of what type of game it was. It felt huge and. I'll say for a large part of this game, the game didn't feel as, to use our one of our favorite words, sexy, as we kind of might have felt it would be between these two teams. But then the the third quarter and the fourth quarter just cracked open. And, and I remember, I'll, I'll say this, I know that we're not going to have a beat writer joining us today because they're traveling, but I did see Jeff Miller at the, the Chicken Finger Bar at one point during halftime. <laughs> and... Uh, and the chicken finger I, bar. The chicken finger bar at, at a GEHA field at Arrowhead Stadium. But I was talking to him, and, and we were just kind of catching up. And he's like, I think things are about to get really weird. And I said, they always kind of do. You know, we always talk about with the Raiders, things get weird. But with any AFC West team, there's just too much knowledge and familiarity of one another, especially when you haven't had a whole lot of changes besides players, as the Chargers had. But... um you know, it, it's just kind of a, a stunning loss. I think that was sort of the takeaway from the locker room last night. You were in there, too, that they just couldn't necessarily finish and capitalize. I mean, at, at halftime, they had, what, a 10-point lead or going into the third. Um, they had a 10-point lead. They led 17-7 to seven at one point. But things started to unravel, and I think we can kind of go through some of those things. One of them, let's start at that third quarter, the absence of Corey Lindsley was huge. It was it was absolutely felt, and in talking with players in the locker room, obviously, and, and Brandon Staley after the game, you know, said, Will Clapp did what he could. He was a great backup center to be in there, but you are in probably the toughest environment in the NFL, at least in the AFC going into that place, which was just a sea of red last night and having to make those adjustments could not have been easy. Then you lose Pipkins. Then towards the end of the game, Justin Herbert gets hurt. And so things kind of start to fall apart a little bit. And you hope at some point that maybe because this is so early on, it's a learning experience and you get it out of the way and you can kind of pack it in and move on. But um, just a, a tough one. And that was definitely the vibe that, that we got from everyone last night too. Yep, agree on everything. Uh, we'll start in the first half, though. Yeah. This team was was pretty good. Uh, the defense, had it not been for that Bryce Callahan pass interference penalty, they were almost pitching a shutout they against were. Patrick Mahomes and company in, in that first half, Haley. And, and I thought there were a few turning points in the game. That certainly was one of them in, in the first half. Uh, I thought the way that the offense came out specifically – the Justin Herbert to Mike Williams connection at Arrowhead, which we've seen countless times. Mike Williams in Arrowhead Stadium, just they just mesh. It works. <laughs> Mike, it works. Mike is unbelievable uh, in, in those uh, in those types of games on that stage. Um, but I, I thought that the defense was pretty dominant in, in that first half, and uh, a very difficult penalty um, kind of changed that drive and. You know, in, instead of uh, the Chargers getting the ball back and potentially scoring there, you know, you're looking at, you know, a, a, a 10-7 game at the half. So you get to halftime, and I tweeted this. Be, before Chiefs fans could even get into their seats for the second half, Justin Herbert is already down the field. They, they've yeah. driven down the field, and they go up 17-7. to seven, and, and that's where... You notice Corey Lindsley wasn't in there. They were up tempo. 
they got down there quickly. Um, so you give Will Will Clapp some some credit for you know ha- having to be thrust into action there, and um, and then you notice that that Trey Pipkins is not out there in, in the second half. So Justin Herbert loses uh, two fifths of his his offensive line, um, and then some some really bad interception luck with Asante Samuel Jr. That was another turning point because that that could have flipped the game the other way. The one that I think everybody's thinking about is uh, the one at the beginning of the fourth quarter. It's first and goal at the three-yard line for the Chargers. And uh, after a a couple big Gerald Everett plays, uh, Justin goes to Gerald again, some miscommunication there. And then the pick six completely changes everything. Yeah. That changed everything. That was, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was going to say that. There are all these like micro turning points, if you will, throughout this game that that felt like the tenor could change at a given moment, but then you'd kind of claw back, you'd kind of fight back, like coming out of half. I mean, the fact that that Herbert to Mike Williams 15 yard touchdown, which was such an insane play by Mike too, and for him to even, I mean, it sucks with the loss because lost in all of this is he now has the most touchdowns ever by a visiting player at Arrowhead Stadium, which is bananas in my opinion but yeah. <laughs> but there is something just about how special that place is and, and how he kind of it's like Frampton comes alive if you will when he he gets out there but there were so many little points that felt like uh-oh is this gonna do it is this gonna change it but that pick six certainly certainly felt like I don't want to say the nail in the coffin, but kind of, you know, at that point. It also felt like, for the most part, the Chargers had taken the crowd out of it. I mean, we talk about there's a sea of red. It is a hostile environment. The Bolt fam, though, those who came were awesome. And I talked to a couple pregame, and they were so excited to be there. But defense was flying around early. Like you mentioned it, they felt fast. It felt like Mahomes was under duress, that he couldn't get stuff done accomplished what he usually can do but then as these little things kind of started to shift and momentum kind of started to shift that pick six that was like who you just felt at that point okay when you get the crowd back in it it's really 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 freaking hard to go there and to accomplish anything and um I didn't you know obviously we were in the press box and I'm very interested to go back and watch the game specifically because of it being the Amazon broadcast, but I did see some tweets saying that Amazon very much explained the Gerald Everett miscommunication very well, that it seemed like he wanted to tap out, but they were in no huddle and they were going and and it was in a hurry up. Um, Things happen, you know, it's, it's week two. And, and for as much as we said last week about how good they were with not really having played together, they also really haven't played together in the regular season yet. Right. And you saw a little bit of that, especially on the road in a tough environment. Yeah, like, you know, we, we've seen Justin and uh, Joshua Palmer after practice all the time Going working at on it. stuff. Um, it's still week two because they, they, they were not in sync in, in the first half. Uh, they finally got in sync towards, uh, I think, towards maybe the end of the first half and then obviously connected on that touchdown late. Um, but I, I think it's, it's a great reminder, too, Haley, like you said, it's week two. I mean, there's a lot of football left, and um, there's a lot of time and a lot of time needed on task to gel a- as a team. I think you clearly saw the potential of this team, especially defensively. Yeah. Um, I, I saw people uh, in the first half like, oh, what happened to Brandon Staley, fourth and Staley? What happened? Well, they punted twice in the first half, and the defense got to stop each time. So. I'll just say this. I think Brandon Say is a little com- little more confident in his defense in mm-hmm. 2022 than perhaps he was in 2021 uh, with good reason. So I-, I do think that that fourth down strategy, we talked about it all offseason. Is it going to change? Yeah, it is going to change at some points because of the confidence in the defense. Um, Justin Herbert got hit late in that game. Um, it looked bad. Uh, yeah. He got back up. I think he missed a play. Mm-hmm. Got back in there. You could tell he was laboring. He, it was like his rib area. I'm sure we'll know more today um, and, and, and throughout you know the next few days. But for him to gut it out, um, to, to throw that ball to DeAndre Carter late in the game, which was unbelievable, 
and uh, and cap it off with that Josh Palmer touchdown. It was just too little, too late, but it showed me the, uh, a guy who who was not going to quit on his team, uh, no matter the circumstance, no matter the the pain. The pain tolerance he has has to be incredible to come back in that game. Um, so it showed a lot of heart, and I think for for Chargers fans, yeah, you could be upset about this loss, and we'll get into some of the other things. Like I said, Haley, at the beginning of the uh, game, before the game, one of the keys had to have been getting the running game going. The running game mm-hmm. needed to come alive and sustain drives um, throughout the course of that game. They stalled out too many times in, in that second half. 3.1 yards a carry won't get it done. 24 for 75. Austin had 14 carries for 39. Josh Kelly, who I thought ran hard, had just yeah. four carries for 22 yards. Sony, four for 13. And then Justin, two for one. So uh, the running game, to me, is something that we saw not work the way it should last year. And early on, I think we need to see a little bit more from that running game. I would agree with that. And I think a lot of that also is going to gel and get better as this team grows together as well throughout the season. It is so early. And I'll say this too. I mean, you mentioned it's it's only week two. And I think even if they had won this game and they had been 2-0, and I would probably say the same thing, that it is only still week two. And it's great to be 2-0. and It would have been great to be 2-0, and especially 2-0 and in the division. But we saw what happened last year when this team started 4-1 and and then what happened toward the back end of the year. So you know, take the losses, I guess, early and and you'll see these guys again. But yeah, the running game certainly needs to get going. I mean, that is something that I think um, also probably wasn't as tight once you had some of those offensive line adjustments and and shuffling kind of going around in there and and really hard to, to sustain, especially later on in the game. And then I'll touch on Justin Herbert for a second because that is what Staley said. He goes, you're not going to see another quarterback do what he did and I never ever want to compare eras of Chargers football where you're comparing like Philip Rivers to Justin Herbert necessarily but it was that type of like gritted out kind of game especially towards the end where it did feel like too little too late look he he they scored the touchdown they needed to recover the onside kick to even get a chance to get the ball back in order to you know kick a field goal to potentially tie or you know if you wanted to go for the win I guess go for the win with a touchdown but Um, he gave them a chance, and that is what Staley said he did last night. He gave them a chance, but when you look at the whole team, he also said you have when you have chances against Kansas City, especially against a team like that, you have to capitalize on them. So I think a lot of these guys last night ended up sort of realizing, or not realizing necessarily, but stating that this was a team loss in total, that in ways they could have been better overall. You know, some of those... Certainly those defensive uh, interceptions that were called back, not great, obviously, but you felt like there was like 15 of them. (laughs) I like I I was trying to go back through it this morning because I felt like I missed some. I felt like I didn't write them all down. I felt like there were so many other moments. And that was the crazy thing about this game is like there felt like they came in bunches, right, in terms of just like there was scoring and then there was a lull and then there was all of this, you know, crazy penalty back and forth kind of stuff that happened. And then the fourth quarter just got wild as per usual things do, I guess in the AFC West. But um, I don't know, you know, I, I, I just think that because it is so early, you take it, you learn from it, you have this mini buy to hopefully get healthy. You know, there obviously was no keen in there, last night but they still Which put is, up you know we're just mentioning that now too yeah. right? i mean with, with everything that happened the fact that keenan allen wasn't in this football game um put a lot of pressure on justin to i, I think you know he does it we say it all the time he, he spreads the ball around anyway but uh, keenan commands people's attention he does and you know mike mike was doing his thing like he always does at arrowhead but not having keenan allen um Maybe the the one A to Devontae Adams and Stefan Diggs in, in terms of route running in this league, um, that's that was a big loss. Mm-hmm. Absolutely a big loss. You know, Mike certainly came up clutch for it. Gerald Everett had the big game. There was that miscommunication there, but you know, and that's what Staley said. It was going to be a team commission. They were going to have to share the load in terms of picking up the pieces for Keenan. But you do hope now that you have this, this time. And like you said, Staley will speak around. I think it is noon today. We'll learn more about some of the severities of what they're dealing with, with some of these guys, but you hope that this is a time to kind of get healthy, 
sort of reset and uh, and move on to what's coming next. Yeah, what's coming next is the Jacksonville Jaguars, and, and I think that's the that's the theme. Uh, it, the, the silver lining here is you get a mini buy, you get a yeah. little more time for guys like Corey Lindsley and Trey Pipkins and, and Justin Herbert to recover, and Keenan Allen. I mean, those are four starters after the first two weeks of the season that that are that are banged up a little bit. So this mini buy comes at, at a good time, and. Coach said the right thing yesterday in terms of is he satisfied to be one on one? No, I mean it's you know you, you, sh- you wanted to win that game, but you wanted to win that game against Kansas City. Um, but we were talking yesterday. There's 15 more of these. Yeah, uh, I, I think everybody was so focused on these first two games and said, hey, two and zero would be incredible. That means you go to Arrowhead, you win, you take care of the Raiders week one. Uh, one and one. Listen, I, I think I think a lot of fans would take one and one knowing that. Um, you got Jacksonville, Houston, Cleveland, Denver. Um, you, you have games that, you know, there's no such thing as a, a, a winnable game in the NFL, but I think there's more, uh, the Chargers have uh, a lot more talent than some of these teams. And, you know, we'll see if that comes to fruition um, over these next several weeks and, and starting to get uh, more connected as a team um, against the Jaguars and then going to Houston, going to Cleveland, Without Deshaun Watson and and uh, and then going to uh, coming back home rather for for Denver on Monday Night Football against Russell Wilson. So um, there's so much opportunity for this team, Haley, and so uh, it starts Week Three. Yeah, it is. It, again, that's what I said. You know, if if they happen to be two and zero, I said this last week. Even after they were one and zero, it is still so early. It's great to be one and zero. It's great to win your first game and and not fall under five hundred. But at the same time. It is a long, long season. And that was the sentiment that everyone echoed in the locker room last week. Khalil Mack talked about it. I think Derwin talked about it. That it is a very, very, very long season. So the fact that um, you are one and one you're one and one in your division, but you'll see these guys again. And, and we sort of expected this AFC West to be a dogfight. That's what everyone expected, right? I mean, it's the fact that all these teams are just going to grind it out and they always play each other really tough and really hard and and – like I said, weird things happen um, because they just they just. That's do. the one constant. We 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 still don't know how good Kansas City is. Yeah. How good the Chargers are. How good the Raiders are. How good the Broncos are. After a week and a half of football, mm-hmm. so much needs to be decided. What we do know is weird things always happen. <laughs> It's, it's true. Weird things always happen. And, and more yeah. weird things happened uh, on Thursday night. It's the wild, wild AFC West tagline. It's the AFC West colon weird things always happen because they do. And you can always count on it and things get nuts and things usually actually come down to the final drive. And this was really sort of the final quarter of the game, if you will. But um, it's early You hope everyone will get a chance to get healthy. I know there are some concerns about that, but like you said, this is the mini buy. It's it's this one opportunity to sort of have a little bit of a respite before you take on the next chunk of the season before your actual buy comes in in late October and go from there. Yeah. J.C. Jackson returned too. We didn't mention Mm -hmm. that. Um, He played most of the game. I know I have to to ask Coach, I think, kind of what happened on that one play with uh, Christian Watson. Um, But – I think it's great to have him back in the mix, have that uh, that secondary really complete now. And they were getting their hands on the football, Haley. They were they getting were. their hands on the football. And uh, I, I feel for Nas because Nas was the one who had that interception on that, that Bryce Callahan uh, penalty that was called. And he gets his hand on the ball. It's, it's He's so close so many times uh, in his NFL career. He's such a ball hawk in Delaware. Um Unfortunate that that one got called back. Yeah, he talked a lot too in the offseason about how last year he had a finger injury that was plaguing him and he felt like he wasn't able to fully make some of those catches, those interceptions like we saw him make at Delaware. So I know he was so excited to be fully healthy this year, have it fully healed and, and get back to form. And you saw that form last night. Unfortunately, it was called back. But that's what I mean. They were flying around. They were doing their thing. And this is a very, very different defense. And I think, you know, with the J.C. Jackson miscommunication and like you said, we'll find out more from Staley. This was his first game and he didn't play in the preseason. And really, this was the first time he got on the field with that group. So it's it's an interesting dynamic, but this is why things happen. But it's so early. Again, there's so much football left to be played and 
they'll turn it around and, and they'll learn from this, as every guy in the locker room said last night. And you can only go up from here. Yep. I also mentioned Clyde Edwards Hilaire was a, was a big problem for the Chargers yesterday, yeah. too. I mean, both uh, on the ground and, and through the air, four for 44 uh, receiving, and then eight for 74, including that 52 yard run. So, um, again, run defense needs to be shored up, um, but it's two games. Uh, so much more to be decided. I, I feel like. I feel like Chargers fans agree with this too. I think measured approach at this point, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're one and one. You've seen a lot of good things. You see some things that need to be improved. And um, you got 15 games to do it. Um, and it, this is a fun team to watch on, on both sides of the football. Yeah, they wouldn't have been picked last night. You know, the NFL could have had any matchup for this first Thursday night game, this new era, if you will, which is not hyperbole to say of – streaming television of, of streaming sports and they chose these two teams and we had known about like I said this matchup since it was announced at the draft and it felt like forever to get here but it finally came but that's why the drama the high stakes the the flashiness of these two teams is why you're going to have a lot of these battles for years to come and it's never going to be easy as we saw but it's always going to be interesting and it's always going to be exciting. It is, uh, and now Chargers fans have a weekend to watch some football yeah. on the couch. Great. Relaxed. You don't have to worry about wins and losses when it comes to the powder blue and uh, get back at it for the Jaguars in week three. And we'll do the same. Eric Smith couldn't join us this morning. Uh, beat writers are flying around. So <laughs> so me and Haley fly us solo uh, for, uh, for the final drive here presented by Microsoft Surface. We'll be back with our regular crew in week three. Have a good weekend. And we'll see you against the Jags.